AI, which obviously mm -hmm. uh, voice recognition is an important part of that. The Wall Street Journal reports that Dan Golden, the former head of NASA, has been working on a new artificial intelligence project. He's been working on it for the last decade. It was announced today, New Edge, that's with a K, is a neurobiology project covering everything from advanced voice recognition to machine learning. New Edge promises to create tech that will alter how humans interact with machines using chips that act and work like the human brain. So this is a little bit about what we were just talking about, Jill. What do you, uh, what do you make of, of New Edge? I'm so excited about this story. I really am. So what I'm excited about is somebody is taking on this project that is not a quick moneymaker. And that's one of the problems that we see in tech. People need to get funding quickly and they need to turn out a, pro, uh, you know, a piece of software or a piece of hardware that they can sell at a high value to get their money back and give it back to their investors. Um, it's very difficult to embark on a technological project that's going to take you 10 or 15 years. So when I heard that he's been working on this for 10 years in secret, um, I was just so excited because you don't see that kind of dedication from a lot of people. But the former head of NASA clearly has the know-how, the connections, and probably the money to get something like this started. I think he was able to raise a couple million dollars from friends and um, other investors, although it sounded like most of the investors were friends, to help him along with this project. And it's really getting into reinventing chips in a lot of ways. So this is something super difficult. Nobody wants to do. It's a huge investment. And I love that somebody said, no, 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 no. There are huge gains to be made here, so let's go for it. And, okay, so the huge gains are uh, the idea of, like, multi-core processing, I think. Mm -hmm. So his understanding is that the human brain is capable of parallel processing, like, somewhere in, like, the 10,000 range or something. Like, our brains are so sophisticated and can do so many things at once. So we have... Um, you know, automated responses, we can talk and breathe at the same time, we can walk around and look at something and pay attention to what we're hearing and also eat, you know, like we could just do so much at once. And there's something to be learned from the way our neurobiology works that we could bring into computing. So when he says AI, I don't think he's really talking about like, let's make a robot that can speak <laughs> you like a, a human. But he's actually talking about like replicating the way our brains physically work. And that's just so exciting. So exciting to see somebody like try to make a leap from scratch rather than building on the technology that we have. Yeah, and that we've been using for so long that has its own bottlenecks uh, on being able to be capable enough to to do this kind of next step, which you kind of have, at least I've always kind of assumed, I, and I imagine anyone that's, that follows computing has assumed that that's kind of that's kind of the end game, right? Is to build a system that's as complicated as the human brain and can do all the things, and then I imagine beyond that, if possible, this is 256 cores, uh, so on on one single chip. And that allows the Lambda factory, uh, fabric, sorry, uh, to connect to upwards of 512,000 devices with, I mean, 400 nanosecond latency. So just, it, it's insane. And I love, I love the longevity, the kind of the, the long-term process, like you were saying, Jill, um, 10 years in the making with investors uh, that just kind of knew this was not going to be a short-term thing. It was going to take some time to be able to pull something off, uh, like this off. And uh, here we are 10 years later, nobody knew about it, but I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot more about this. I think it is so interesting that he comes from NASA. He was at NASA from 1992 to 2001. I mean, if you think about the way they did technology at that time, I mean, it's very different. Like you said, Joel, very different than the way Silicon Valley works, where, you know, we know all the investors here. I don't think we know. I think they were all uh, unknown angel investors. Uh, and, you know, if you think about NASA and how uh, they progressed and how they now had to go into the public sector. That's something that is, I think a little bit I'm wary of just because, uh, but he's not in the private sector. He's now getting the money. So maybe he learned. Uh, but it is interesting because I think about how what Elon Musk has done uh, with, you know, that NASA couldn't have done just by like get, getting the money and just doing it. Uh, so it seems like maybe that that is what he's doing and getting the money and slowly doing it. So maybe the combination uh, will work out. It, it is fascinating. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. And I, I like that it's goal focused. Like there's a very clear end game in mind. 
Um, I'm curious to see if in the coming months what we hear more from this company are like proofs that they can do something uh, with computers that human brains are very good at doing, but computers are bad at doing. So things like facial recognition, um, identifying images, thing, things like that. Like there are there are a handful of things. Language processing, for example, is another really hard one for computers that we're just not good at. And maybe part of the solution is just having more processing going on in parallel. Yeah, I mean, a part of that is the newverse um, aspect of this, which is basically military grade uh, voice recognition for next generation computing. And basically what it's all about is being able to use voice as authentication, uh, the, they say the most secure form of biometric authentication, even with tons of background noise and other kind of conversations happening in the background, other voices in the background, still being able to, to use this technology to be able to pull out your voice out of all of that noise and still know that, you know, with, without a shadow of a doubt, that is you and authenticate you based around that. That's interesting because I'm wondering if people listening to this right now could tell the difference between you and I, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes get that complaint when there are females, two females. Yeah, like, we yeah. can tell. Stop the difference. <laughs> I know. <laughs> exactly. They're just all girls. Can, who, can, who cares? You can unlock each other's phone. It's a neat trick. Yeah.